Hello guys, welcome to episode number five, another day on the M City. It's nice and bright and sunny today, and we decided welcome, to, welcome. to make some time to talk about sleep, sleep cycles, how important it is for our health, for our recuperation, and overall to achieve, maintain, and work towards you know, future goals. Ultimately, from uh, years of experience that we have, uh, we found that the biggest, one of the biggest issues yeah. probably, Ruben, yeah? yeah. Um, we just try to cut down on the sleep. To make other stuff. To do something else. To do something else, yeah. yeah. And uh, somehow sleep seems to be like a waste of time. To a lot of people it is. It becomes like the most it expandable is. commodity of all the things that they can yeah, use. Yeah, it's like, do. okay, what am I going to cut down? I'll cut down on sleep. The sleep time, yes. And unfortunately, we end up paying for it. That's right. The sleep is, uh, is cumulative. But you cannot recuperate sleep. Once you lost it, it's gone. And the stress that you accumulate, it keeps adding on. You know, the, the funniest thing I hear from my client, they say, hey, I'm gonna just sleep five hours instead of eight, and I'm just gonna get the same response to it. No, you're not. Not even close. So let's figure it out. Let's talk about why is it important to sleep. What, what is sleep? What is sleep? Sleep is a process of bringing your brain to rest. Mm -hmm. And from a conscious, unconscious level, the different perspectives. But it's a process in which the brain does all these chemicals, reactions, in which actually rests away all the stress that you have accumulated throughout the day. So you basically, you, you go repair, it's a, it's a repair process. Yes. So throughout the day you go and you break down a lot of different things. That's correct. And your body has to recuperate. It's very important to understand that it pretty much does mostly throughout the sleep. That is correct, yes. Yeah. That's so sleep is the only thing that can help you rebuild yourself. That's correct. Now if you cut down on the sleep, your body is going to not do what it was supposed to do. No, it's going to accumulate more stress and all the uh, effort that we put towards, you know, adding muscle, losing body fat, they're going to come to a screeching halt because it just won't happen. So what do you think about people that, I'm sure some of you guys, I've seen them in the gym, maybe some of you do that. Get up early in the morning, 45 a.m. to this. run on a treadmill. Have you done this before? Uh, not, not to run on the treadmill, but I go see clients, you know, as early as 5 o'clock in the morning. I've done 6 a.m. in the morning for years, mm -hmm. for years. Uh, so that means generally get up 5. An hour, yeah, but an hour before, yeah. So a lot of times we do a lot of different things to accommodate our schedule. But for in particular, I want to talk about people that get up to exercise, so they cut down on their sleep to exercise. What do you think about it? I think it's not a good idea, and I've seen it many times, you know? I personally think they're going to get a whole lot more if they sleep more. If they sleep an hour more rather than running for an hour. Yeah, yeah? I have to agree with you. Because if you actually break <laughs> down and accumulate a lot of stress, and then you cut down on the sleep to go do a whole lot more stress, and we're going to talk about cardiovascular exercise in general, yeah. uh, how to incorporate it properly into your lifestyle. Uh, so ultimately, sleeping will be better, because ex exercise is a catabolic, tissue destructive, yeah. and sleep is anabolic, tissue building. That's correct. So you recover during sleep. Right. So let's figure out this. Sleep is extremely important. We would want to talk more about how we can get our clients sleeping longer and better. Correct. Yeah? So what is a proper sleep? Who knows how to sleep properly? Well, not too many people, but if we go back in history before the advent of, of invention of the, of the light bulb, I mean, we pretty much went to sleep when it got dark. We might have used, you know, candles, you know, or any type of oil lamps to uh, to have some light. But the light was so flimsy and and and, uh, and weak. It actually promotes sleep because it, you, as you light, as the light begins to vibrate from like a candle or a candle, it actually is very sedative, so it makes us sleep. So, so we candle was, light was sedative and people would fall asleep much quicker, yeah. But ultimately, you, I think it was regulated by sun. You know? Yeah, sun yeah, coming see. out. Moon coming up and things yes. like that. Yes. So as the sun was coming down, mm -hmm. we natu naturally were designed to slowly go to sleep. That's right. So by the time the sun was down, mm -hmm. we generally as humans would be out. Yeah, because actually as the light begins to uh, dwindle down, they, we increase the, the release of melatonin, which sets us up to sleep, and it decreases the, the, the cortisol response, so which lot, sets us a, up more to a sleep. A lot of hormonal changes happen at that particular time. 
Yeah. So think of it like this: sun comes down, your hormones, your stress hormones coming down, your uh, uh, sleep hormones go up. So you would want to go more towards the sleep, and you naturally fall down in sleep. Yeah. So rest recovery goes up, and uh, waste and uh, uh, catabolism goes down. Okay. And then let's say if you need to wake up, well, we would wake up generally when the sun comes up. Pretty much, yeah. So on average, the night was approximately from like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's could, like an average. And in the winter, it will be slightly longer. It could be longer. Yeah. So it also depends where you're hereditary from. You might have a more requirement to more sleep more and yeah. or less sleep. Yeah. It changes. It changes the parameters of when you go to sleep and when you wake up because in the northern Europe in, in the summertime. It is bright daylight until like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. And uh, but it's you know, but it gets you know, uh, sunrise is actually later. It happens around 7:30 o'clock in the morning. Where we here in the United States, where we are right now, in the summertime, five o'clock in the morning is already wide. Yeah, I was in, I was in Costa Rica uh, about a year ago, and 5 p.m. sun goes down regardless yeah. of anything. Yeah, the sun down 5 p.m. by the time six hits. It's dark. It's dark. Yeah. You want to go to sleep probably. Coast. If you live in Costa Rica, you probably go to sleep right around nine o'clock. Much earlier. Yeah, a lot early. Yeah. yeah. So ultimately, you would want to sleep approximately about eight hours, give and take, yep. depending on individual. We don't want to give like specific advice. Yeah. No need, but it's a general information. It's a general information yep. about eight hours. So what happens during mm -hmm. the sleep? There's a four hours we do. There's four hours, a window of four hours to do all physical repair. Okay, so four hours you just repair physically and four hours you repair psychologically. What happens if we don't undersleep or undersleep from one end to another end? You're cutting on that process. So you cut down the process. So think of it like this, if you go to sleep late, yeah, mm -hmm. first was a psychological repair? No, the first is a, phys a physiological. Ph physical. Physical. Phys so let's say you go to sleep around midnight. Or midnight, yeah. So you cut down on two hours there. Right. So guess what? Your body actually does not recover to its optimal potential. Physically. Physically. Correct. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, if you get up early, then you cut down on psychological repair. That is correct. So there's a very much possibility for you to manifest either the injury, mm -hmm. like a back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, yeah. or you can manifest some kind of psychological problem, let's say anxiety, depression, yep. uh, some kind of mood swings or not, something of that sort. Not really good cognitive function, so it's difficult. Or you cannot concentrate good. Concentrate, think properly and stuff like that, it will get, uh, it will get messed up. Okay. Yeah. So ultimately, it's very important to sleep at about eight hours. So we highly recommend you guys to start sleeping just a little bit more, and besides sleeping, I mean, I have seen people who sleep eight hours for sure, mm -hmm. but yet they're not rested. Well, what can possibly affect a quality of sleep? Well, the environment. It could be too hot, too cold. Okay. It could be too bright. There's plenty of people that sleep next to their computers or with their laptops in bed or with their television in their, in their room. And that bright light, actually, our skin has photogenic you know, cells that actually reset their, their receptors for light. Mm -hmm. So if the TV is on, if the uh, lamp is on, or whatever, like a lot of people sleep with the lights on, they're afraid of the boogeyman or whatever. So uh, they 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 actually gonna hold their. How many how many clients do you know that have a big screen most right them, in front of their bed? Most of them, when I've gone to their houses for one reason or another, they have a human. How many screen. couples do you know, your clients, that uh, let's say a husband likes to watch TV, but the wife wants to sleep, mm -hmm. and. She goes supposedly to sleep uh -huh. and he watches his favorite show, okay. vice versa. 